on behalf of your host, Steve D, this is Bruce Buffer saying thank you for tuning in to Extreme Life. And now, this is the moment Extreme Life fans around the world have been waiting for. It's time! We're live. <laughs> How you doing? You doing good? Yeah, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm well. How's the weather down? You're in Florida, right? Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. It's pretty hot right now. I can't oh. lie. Yeah, we are in the middle of summer, so it's pretty warm and humid, but like I 90. like it. I like being outside, so it's not bad. Yeah, so it's like 90 degrees and like 100% humidity, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it can be pretty gross. Yeah, yeah. I, I come down there every so often. Uh, I do a lot of diving down there. I'm a diver, so I do a lot of uh, – I go down there and do a lot of uh, – you know, playing around in the ocean, it's a lot of fun. But uh, you know, the, the this time of year, it's it's pretty brutal sometimes. So <laughs> I'd rather come down in the winter. It's like seventy degrees, and <laughs> you know, um, yeah. Nice. So, so thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. I mean, you know, this is this is awesome. I mean, I want to talk about you. I want to talk about what you have going on. I want to talk about your career. You're fighting. You have an amateur career. Um, you know, it looks like you have, you know, uh, three and two as an amateur. And then you came into the you, you turned pro like last year, I think. Right. Or the year before that. Yeah. In August of last year, I became pro. Yeah. OK. All right. So tell me about your journey. Yeah. A little bit. I mean, what what uh, you know, wh- how did you get into MMA? What drove you? Where do you, I mean, I want to know everything. Tell me everything. Um, all right. Uh, <laughs> well, I started when I was a kid. I was in Taekwondo and my mom was going to let me. Uh, but then she kind of was like, hey, why don't you try Taekwondo? And I was like, OK, sure. And I became obsessed with it. I used to go every single um, day and I did it. And like, I even did it when it wasn't cool. Like when I got into middle school, I was like secretly still going to martial arts. Like, but I didn't want my friends to know. You were hiding it. Uh, it's so ridiculous now that you think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then I was in high school and one of the boys in my class kind of mentioned wrestling. And I was like, well, I did Taekwondo. So like I could wrestle. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, if you think you could wrestle, like, you should come to tryouts today. And I'm like, okay, like, sure. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I actually went and, like, asked the coach the same day. Like, I was like, hey, I was obviously not prepared to try out today, but I think I could do it. Like, could I try out tomorrow? And he was like, sure, no problem. And there was another girl at the time, too. Um but I think he kind of didn't think we were going to stick around. And then we stuck <laughs> around. And and yeah. then he was actually. Both the, you guys stuck around? Yeah, we both actually stuck around the whole the whole year. Um, and then and he was kind of the person. My wrestling coach was kind of the person who kind of directed me towards the jungle. Just kind of gave me a recommendation. And then. Years later in college, I was like, oh, I'm just going to try out this gym to lose some weight. I had all that experience in martial arts before. And I went and I fell in love. And I remember my first class, I was like, I want to fight. And they're like, okay, like, hold on, killer. Slow your roll down. <laughs> like, <relax. laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So um, that's how it began. And then I just r- fell in love and I just really wanted to fight. So I worked really, really hard just to get a fight, just to prove I was ready to fight and then just spiraled from there how did that happen like you were you said you worked really hard just to get a fight because it's you know it's i don't think people realize how hard it is uh to to be a fighter and and train and all the stuff you have to go through so yeah. you know tell me about that how did how did you know getting that first fight what was that like were you nervous i mean did it <laughs> i'd like what people don't realize is how often these mma gym owners hear that people want to fight you know they get it all the time yeah so i i kind of went in there and i was like i want to fight and they're like 
okay. And I'm like, no, seriously. And they're like, okay, well, you know, there's this pro team, like this pro class, and you mm-hmm. kind of have to get invited to come in. And I was like, well, I want to be a part of it. So <laughs> fight me. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, I was just, I basically was trying so hard just to get able to, just to be able to spar. And it's like a running joke between me and my head coach. My head coach did not like, they said it was like, Oh, you have to try it out. To get in the pro team. There's no tryouts. They were just like brushing me off. It's so funny to think about it now, but, um, they still didn't let me in. And I took discourage you a little bit. They were trying to discourage it a little bit, or I don't know necessarily if they were trying to give me the brush off, but I think it was just, he gets this all the time and he didn't yeah. know. I was serious or not. Like I was just this young girl who walked like I was just a young girl. I was twenty one at the time, like in college and I'm just like, I wanna fight and they're like, Okay, kid. Um, so I ended up taking my first kickboxing fight without ever sparring. Like I just went in there, I was like, Coach, just sign me up, like they're not gonna let me in pro team, fine, I'll take a fight, whatever. So I take a fight and I just, I go in to my first kickboxing fight and I just go nuts. Like literally just start flinging my limbs at this girl. Um, (laughs) I did, I did. And it was awesome. It was so great. Yeah. So I won. And then after I won, they told me I could come and spar and Shortly after, they set me up with my first MMA fight. So your first fight, we we started talking a little bit about that. Um, you know, you're working up to your first fight. You got involved in MMA. I started MMA because I joined this MMA gym, and I had just saw everybody training and decided I really wanted to do it. Um, I also remember there was a bunch of girls that were there um, who were like green belts and blue belts. And at the time, Felicia was a brown belt. So I was like, oh my gosh, I was just like looking up to these girls and they also fought. And I was like, oh, I want to, I want to do it too. Like, that's so cool. Um, so yeah, I went up to my striking coach and I was just like, I want to fight. And he was like, well, you got (laughs) to talk to the head coach. And, you know, I ended up just taking my first kickboxing fight, never sparring. Um, I actually wasn't going to go through with the kickboxing fight either. Um, and I ended up going through with oh, it. What was that about? What you were just getting, um, was it nerves or? No, I just, I had um, a death in the family. Oh. So I was just like, oh, in my head, I was like, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And then it was like two weeks away. And my coach was like, hey, like we're, everybody's getting together and preparing for the fight this Sunday are you going to come in and train? And I was like, okay, sure. And he's like, so I didn't want to ask you, but are you still going to fight? And I'm like, well, I'm here. So I might as well just do it. Right. And he's like, yeah, "Yeah, sure. Just do it. And I was like, (laughs) okay, sure. Like at the time I didn't know what fighting was. So Mm -hmm. it was just a little bit more, okay, sure. Like whatever. (laughs) <laughs> now that I think, now that I know what fighting is, I would never just be so carefree about it. Now yeah. it's like, oh my god, do you want me to fight in like two weeks? And yeah, uh. that, that was your first. That was your first amateur fight, right? And then you yeah. went in there and it just kind of you. You know, how did you go in there and what was that like? Like the day of the um, fight, what was that like? You um, know, the day of the fight, I remember just being so nervous. <laughs> I have. I kept telling my coaches, I'm like, I'm going to throw up. I'm going to throw up. They're like, just run to the bathroom. So I kept like running to the bathroom and like nope, running back. And just, back. <laughs> yeah. And I'd be like, I didn't, I didn't throw up. And they'd be like, well, we don't care. <laughs> like, we don't need to know. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, go sit in a corner, like go relax. I was literally just this bundle of nerves and. And then it's time to go and, oh, it's time to walk out. And I remember they didn't ask me if I wanted a walkout song. They were like, oh, the DJ, he's got like the perfect walkout song for you girls. Like, don't you worry about it. (laughs) So I'm like, okay. That's a little frightening. (laughs) uh, Yeah. No, it was Girl Fight. That song, Girl Fight. 
<laughs> and uh, I just instantly like vomited in my mouth. I'm like, oh, come on, whatever. But <laughs> I remember just walking down there and being like, okay, like, all right, like, you're fine. Just, just go in there. Just don't think about it. Just, just go in there. And I remember, um, I had like a bunch of like flashy Taekwondo kicks from doing Taekwondo as a kid. Uh And my coach, um, it was like a wheel kick. My coach was like, okay, like, I know you really, really want to throw that really dangerous kick to throw. Don't do it until the second round. It gets caught. You're in trouble. (laughs) Yeah. He's like, don't do it till the second round. And I'm telling you, I'm like, three, four months into training. I just don't care. So carefree. So I'm like, okay, I won't do it till the second round coach. I like, it's like a minute and a half in and I throw it and he's like, what are you doing? But it lands. And it was just, it was so funny. I, but yeah, I just went after this girl. I threw everything I could, every single move I had ever learned in my life. I threw at her. <laughs> threw everything <laughs> like, but the kitchen sink, right? Just yeah, everything. <laughs> um, and I ended up winning and I was so, I was so happy and I was so proud. And I was just like, okay, I need to, I need to feel like this again. I want to do this again. So I was like, get me an MMA fight coach because <laughs> yeah, right. I had all that wrestling experience too. Yeah. And, you know, when I started grappling, I just kind of picked up on it pretty naturally. So I was like, I want to, I want to punch someone in the face and grapple them. Um, <laughs> yeah. but So you got a ground game as well as a Taekwondo striking game, right? So that, that's a pretty good combination uh, to yeah. throw at people. Yeah, at the time it was um, it was pretty good, but after my first MMA fight, um, that was definitely a wake up call. So yeah. <laughs> it didn't. It was not nearly as carefree as. Um, yeah, no. Um, my first yeah, MMA Sorry. fight told me it was real. Like it really showed me it was real. Yeah, yeah. So what changed? I mean, from learning that. You know, going in through that first fight, I mean, to the to let's say getting ready for the second fight, um, you know, because you said you went in with like four months training into the first one, nervous as hell, yeah. ready to throw up every five seconds coming into the fight. Right. Yeah. You walk out to girl fight. <laughs> for yeah. yeah. Um, um, so there's a ton of nerves. You, you go in there and you're kind of like you're not really listening to your coaching at that point. You know, just because you you, you kind of just like you're so I think nerves and adrenaline kick over and you yeah. just throw whatever the hell you got in the in the tank uh, and you end up winning, which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, so what changed in your in your uh, training and, and, you know, do you, you know, in your coaching or in any of that? What what uh, changed from that fight on? Well, I had a, a little bit more time between my kickboxing and my MMA fight. Um, I remember it being a couple uh, extended amount of time because I ended up um, getting an injury, like breaking my foot and just oh. having time. So it quite a bit, I want to say like six to seven months had passed between that amount. And so I was really working hard and I realized, okay, like there's a lot of work that goes into training for an MMA fight. Um, but I, I was still a little bit in that kind of carefree headspace where I was like, Oh, like it's ignorant. That's what I want to say. It is. It was just, (laughs) I was very, well, I was very young in the sport. Experience. You didn't have the experience. Yeah. I didn't have experience. I didn't know what it was like to actually get hit in the face or be on the receiving end of an ass whooping. So yeah. at the first, my first fight, I was on the receiving end of an ass whooping <laughs> and it definitely changed that changed the like way that I looked at fighting completely like, yeah. or the way that like I trained for a fight completely. Like it was no longer like, Oh, this is fun. Like now mm. this is like, Oh no, like this is serious and I need to work hard or I'm going to get seriously hurt. Oh yeah. People get, you can get really hurt. Uh, I've seen, you know, people get seriously injured, unfortunately, in, in, you know, in MMA, uh, you know, over the years, I mean, generally, I mean, it's, you know, you, you want to see every athlete, you know, you want to see a good fight, but you generally want to see every athlete walk out of there (laughs) without serious injury. (laughs) So, so getting, Um, getting your ass kicked a little bit <laughs> in that, in that second fight. Was that the second fight or the first it MMA? Was, 
it was my first MMA fight. Um, okay. Yeah. And then I've had some, you know, that was one of the ones that's like, whoa, like, okay. Yeah. Like definitely respect this. Like, this is very difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, ever since then I've, I've had my ups and downs in the sport. I've been on, you know, the side of where I've won dominantly. I've had some really tough wins and then I've had some really tough losses. Um, but yeah, I just think that so much has changed. And especially now that I look at this as as a career, Mm -hmm. I would never just take it as lightly as I did before. (laughs) Well, did you ever think like when you were growing up, did you ever think I'm going to be a pro fighter? (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh it's actually so funny because i remember i had dreamt about it really like i had wanted yes i thought it i thought ufc was so cool like i thought mma was so cool like i was like yeah i want to be a pro fighter like it was just something i would say like but i never thought i would actually do it um i honestly like, I didn't think I would actually ever be pro until I turned pro. <laughs> like, yeah. I was oh. actually shocked. I was like, oh, wow, like, this is actually happening. Yeah, and your first pro fight was uh, in, in 1 FC, Invicta FC, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, 36, I believe. Um, and then you were, again, you came into uh, 1 F- or uh, Invicta FC uh, 37. Uh, yeah again and you know a little bit of a rough start but you're 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 doing well i mean you know you're gonna you're gonna and you know i always tell people you know what sometimes you go through some rough patches in the beginning and then you just you find your niche you find your groove right and i think that that's what you're looking for right now right you got to find that groove uh yeah and i'm i'm really i'm really young in this sport so i i I used to beat myself up a little bit more but after experiencing like after having you know not an ideal start to my professional career. I really had to take a step back and just be like, okay, well I can't be so difficult or so tough on myself. Like I am relatively young in the sport. Very young. I only had six, uh, amateur fights ever. Yeah. Like including kickboxing. And I made it into Invicta with only six amateur fights. And And that's a hell of a lot. I mean, I'm going to tell you there's athletes that have been training a long time that aren't, aren't getting picked up by a promotion like that. Well, uh, that have been out yeah. there for a while, play, uh, amateur fighting and, and that's what they do or, or backyard picnic fighting. Some of them, I've seen, you know, so yeah. like, there's girls who have, you know, 15 amateur fights and they have like seven, eight pro fights and they still can't get in. Like, you know, it's just, I, I ended up yep. getting really lucky. So, um, or just standing out. <laughs> so, well, hey, you know what? Here's here's what I, I always think of this, and and I, I never look at losses as losses for the most part. I look at them as opportunities. They're yeah. opportunities to learn what you need to fix <laughs> and exactly. learn what you need to improve on. And you find that stuff out. I mean, you know, I know in uh, in in uh, one uh, in Invicta FC 37, you got caught in that body triangle, and you just got wrapped up in that rear naked choke. And, you know, you had no choice. I mean, that was going to be either pass out or tap out. <laughs> there was no choice. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, and I think anybody who trains and I'm a jujitsu guy, I train a lot. I do. I'm a, uh, I do uh, Muay Thai as well. And, you know, I know what it's like to get caught in one of them. You know, you, you got no choice. You have to tap because you're just going to. Yeah. Either that or you're going to wake up and, uh, 10 minutes later. <laughs> so. Yeah. And I, I mean, that fight against Hope, I, I just, yeah. I really didn't even want to fight. Like, if uh, my, I, I did not even want to. I was so excited to get the hell out of there. And I was so excited for it to be over. So, okay. um, yeah. I mean, so I really don't, I just, I'm really happy that I'm getting it over with in the beginning of my career because I could go on a skid, you know, at the pinnacle of my career. Like I could be at the top and go oh, yeah. on a skid. Like I'd rather get the skid out of the way and kind of just grow from here and learn um, than have it happen later. So. And you will. I mean, were you were you just not in a good headspace for that fight? It sounds like you're saying that. It sounds like you're saying I just wasn't really there to fight that night. You know, yeah. I don't know if that if that's accurate or not. I'm just, you know, it's well, I had I had woken up that day pretty sick. Um, I don't know <laughs> what it was. I don't know if 
I had eaten something bad. We went and got barbecue after, um, after weigh-in. So I don't know if it was like too heavy or. That might not what. be good after. Were you cutting? <laughs> Were you cutting? Um, after that? Or? Well, I've always been, I mean, I'm going to be just super honest. I really don't care. Um, I'm, I've always been a small 35er. Like it's never been a secret. I've always just fought at 35 to to get to 135. I I mean, I've always fought at 35 because the opportunities there, it's easy for me to make the weight. It's no big deal. Um, so I didn't necessarily like have to cut a ton. I don't have to sit in the sauna. So, um, I didn't have a sauna cut. We just went out to dinner after my dad was in town. We went. And we got some barbecue, and the next day I woke up and not I feeling just so hot. Didn't feel good, and I slept the whole day, and I still didn't feel good, and slept in the van, and didn't feel good, and ended up like throwing up in the back, just trying to feel better, and I mm-hmm. still didn't feel good, and we went to the doctor and. I didn't have like a fever or anything. And he was like, okay, like you have an option. Like I can pull you from the fight because I don't think you should fight or you can fight. And I was just like, well, I feel like the backlash of me walking out right now would be worse than actually fighting. So I just went out there and I fought. Promotions, you know, if you cancel a fight, they don't take that too well sometimes. I don't know about Invecta, but, you know, I know some promotions out there, if you, if you're, it's the day of and you pull out, they, they don't, you know, yeah, not, that's I think, not a good thing. So I think Invecta would have been definitely forgiving of me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just, I don't know if I would have been able to forgive myself if yeah. I didn't go out there. So. <laughs> I went out there and I, I fought and I ended up losing and I'm taking nothing away from hope. She's, she's good. I did try, but, uh, I, yeah, I just also wanted a a reason, a way out. So yeah, yeah, there's, uh, I won't take anything away from hope because I've seen her fight and she's, she's very good. She's very talented, but I can also say that it, it just, it wasn't me. It just wasn't your your best that day, you know. And maybe you'll yeah. get another shot at her. I mean, that that's a you know that might be a good rematch, right? So get back in there and, and try yeah. to note yourself. Do not eat barbecue for before fight night. Oh my god, I learned so <laughs> many lessons after that trip. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now that stuff happened. You know what? It's not how. It, Here's the thing, you know, what makes a winner not how you win. It's how you how you take defeat and how you yeah, move on from that. That's you know, and then that you come back and you keep, you keep going forward, um, and, and moving on. And, and you're, you're absolutely right. You're at the very beginning of your career. You're very young in the sport. Um, there's a lot of opportunity out there, especially now, uh, you go back, you know, several years ago, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of opportunity for female fighters at all. Uh, yeah. in fact, there wasn't any <laughs> for the most part. Uh, uh, and then, you know, spin forward to, to the last several years, you know, we've seen that become a very big, you know, I mean, you got Valentina Shevchenko, you got uh, Amanda Nunez, you got all these wonderful fighters out there that are just incredible. Um, yeah. You know, and, and you know, uh, and, and it's great that you could actually, you know, one of the advantages I think you probably have then, you know, is being that's a little bit of a smaller fighter because you can, you don't have to make those drastic dehydrated weight cuts <laughs> that other people yeah. might have to make, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you uh, – do you follow a Cage Fury at all or any of those? I'm sure you probably watch all these – you know, a lot of these fights. But uh, uh, I, I, James Gonzalez uh, was – you know, when he, when he beat Pat Sabatini for the championship, um, for the featherweight championship, he, had, he got that fight in six days' notice and made a 16-pound weight cut, <laughs> which is like – it's crazy. It's so, like – how do you get to that? You know, 16 pounds is just unbelievable. Uh, you know, you give somebody two weeks, they can't drop 16 pounds, right? Six days. And then he wins. And he was the underdog. And he comes in and wins. Um, you know, so, so you know, to be able to make weight at, you know, reasonably, you know, uh, reasonably easily, I guess, as I would say. I mean, I, I don't know if those are the right words, but, yeah. you know, that's a good advantage to have. So you could come in there. You know, and and I think you're going to have a great career going forward. It, you know, you just got to keep focused and keep training. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think that's going to be the the key. You know, just stay stay on it. <laughs> you know, For don't sure. let them drag you down. Um, 
where do you, is there a particular fight? Do you see yourself, do you have another fight coming up? Um, I'm hoping to fight in August. I'm waiting to hear back. Hopefully they let me know this week if I, if I can get on there, um, and I can fight, but everything's just kind of up in the air right now with Corona times. So uh, yeah, it's tough. I mean, how's training been with that? Cause that's, that's been, I'll tell you what, uh, no gyms here are open. We're all pretty much, you know, nothing's open. Uh, and especially, you know, it's killing me because jujitsu is not, you know, jujitsu is the opposite of social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, that is, um, it is not social distancing. At no, all. there's literally no way to do it, but, uh, you know, it, I mean, how's training been? I mean, I know you're still training. How's that been going with uh, with all this stuff happening with the COVID? And uh, I've been lucky enough um, to actually be a part of of two camps, okay. so I've been able to train um, this entire time, like really smartly. Um, I was part of Felicia's camp. Felicia, when she fought Amanda um, Nunez, I yeah. got to be a part of her camp. Um, so we, you know, kind of like made a little path. It was just like three of us that we would, you know, just kind of quarantine and yeah. just train amongst the three of us and just kind of go home and hunker down until she fights. Um, and that's exactly what we did. Mm -hmm. So, um, then after that, shortly after that, uh, another one of my teammates, is in camp and she's supposed to fight, uh, I believe at the end of this month. So I've been able to, it's just another three person camp like, mm -hmm. uh, Felicia. So I've been able to train throughout this entire thing and get better. Yeah. And yeah, I just feel like I have a, a leg up right now, which is nice. Where do you see yourself in five years from now, five years from now, you, you're fighting for five years. Where would you like to be? Oh man. Um, <laughs> I definitely see myself being a staple in, in the UFC flyweight division. I would like to fight as a flyweight. Um, and I definitely could see myself there. Uh, so I would hope that in five years, how, how old would I be? About 32, 33. Um, yeah, I would be hoping that by that time I would be fighting for a championship. Very established and, and yeah. fight UFC at that point, hopefully. Yeah, and the maybe on my way, you know, I would, by 35, I would hope to not be fighting anymore, so. Well, a lot of fighters retire, except for like the Randy Couture and Chuck Liddell. Those guys every so often pop out, you know, I mean, I don't think they're going to again, but, you know. Uh, Chuck yeah. Bell fought till like, he was like 47 years old. <laughs> so, yeah, no, like, I don't want to. I don't want to be older and fighting. I want to. I want to be done fighting by the time I have kids. Yeah. I I don't think I want to be fighting and having kids. Okay. I yeah. think if I if I you know if I end up having a kid while I'm fighting, like then I'm so lucky to That's share so my that world with the but i just hope that i would be done fighting by the time i have kids ready to retire major mark and move yeah. uh, maybe training people or something like that exactly that like yeah. i would hope to be a little bit like just having a little less of a crazy fight life because i love it but I, I think i would only want to live it for so long yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of the, you know, and I don't know how often uh, I know you just turned pro like a year ago, a little over a year ago, maybe. Um, yeah. And you had a couple fights already. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, I see is a lot of guys uh, and, and girls out there in, in, you know, in that profession, you know, there's a couple, there's two types of fighters. There's, there's the fighters that only fight like once a year. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's the fighters that fight like four or five times a year. Yeah. <laughs> How to help you even recover between, you know, look at Cowboy Cerrone and he, uh, like he fights a lot. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, with that type of, uh, uh, with that type of schedule, you have to be prepared to have a very mixed record. You know, your record's going to be mixed a bit because you're you're not always going to be 100 percent if you're fighting that much. You know, so, right. you know, I think sometimes we just got to decide how 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 much is healthy to to, to step in there and, and, and fight. Um, 
because you take a lot out of yourself, you know, when you do that. But, you know, I think you're, you're going to do well. Hopefully you make it to the UFC. I have no doubt, you know, if you keep your motivation, you keep yourself, keep your eye on the prize. Thank you. <laughs> I have no doubt that you'll, you'll get there at some point. Yeah. Are you watching uh, UFC 251 this week? Yeah, of course. You know, I'm sure you are. All right. So let's do some picks real quick. Who do you got? <laughs> Who do you got for uh, Usman or Masvidal? Oh, Masvidal. Masvidal? I want Masvidal to win so bad. No, he's the underdog, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I want him to win so bad. It would be so epic. <laughs> you can't tell me that if Masvidal wins, that wouldn't be like the coolest thing ever. Oh, it would. It would. Like I said, a lot of people don't see it happening. But, I mean, he's got a lot more fights under his belt than Usman. Uh, I mean, he's got 30, he, his record's 30, 35, 13, and zero. Uh, and, 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 and Usman's, you know, 16 and one. So, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be an interesting, it, interesting fight. I can't wait. I, I don't know if I'm more excited about the fight or seeing Fight Island and what goes on there. It kind of reminds me, you ever see Bruce, uh, Bruce Lee's uh, Enter the Dragon where they go to that island? <laughs> No, I don't know if you saw see that. Well, it's like the movie where they take them to this island and they fight in matches, and it kind of reminds me of that a little bit. It's it's very cool. Um, what about uh, Volkanovski and and uh, Holloway? Any thoughts on that? Max all day. Max all day long. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will root for Max forever. <laughs> okay. What about the Aldo fight? Aldo and and uh, Jan. Ooh, this one's so tough. I, uh, I think Aldo might edge this one out. Okay. All right. So, and, and, uh, I think Van Zant and Rebus, what do you think about that one? Uh, I give it to Rebus. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, they're both and pretty close. They're both pretty close. I mean, Van Zant has a couple more losses in there, but also a couple more fights. So yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's how it's, it, you know, and, and what I, I always tell people, you look at the record, you look at the stats, you look at the, the underdog and the, and the ratios and who might do, you know, who, who, they're, who people are picking the win, but it really comes down to who's feeling what that night and who wants it where, who, who wants it more and right. who, who gets that shot and gets lucky. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's just yeah, getting that right. lucky punch in and, and it takes you down. Um, but you know, uh, it, it's definitely, um, definitely, uh, going to be an awesome, awesome night, uh, with a ton of great sure. fights, ton of, it's a stacked card. I'm excited about it. So, uh, sure. you know, um, so definitely thank you again for coming on. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, uh, come back again. I would love to talk <laughs> again. Maybe we'll talk before your next fight. If you get that next fight or, or after the fight or, Whatever. Yeah. We could get you back on great. And, and talk about prep for the fight and all that stuff. So uh, yeah. love to have you back on. Thanks again. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, that's awesome. 